Okay, let me share a screen and uh, let's get started. Again, the whole process should only take maybe uh, two minutes, okay? But you know, I think I need to slow down to make sure you guys, you know, uh, follow me, okay? So for this section, uh, I actually intentionally posted my syntax and a data set to my GitHub website. The reason I do this is that, you know, let's say, I want to make sure you see that, you know, let's say sometimes there are different ways of doing the same thing. So you could actually upload the data set to this platform. You can also, let's say, you know, let's say connect your, you know, data set to this platform using HTML address or maybe just download it there, right? So first I'm going to open this uh, GitHub website. This is my GitHub website I used to post, you know, Sometimes my, you know, my repositories, my data sets, and even my own resumes, okay? Also have some other, you know, interesting stuff like, you know, how people vote in current company, okay? How, how many of these residents actually vote for Republicans? And what's the percentage of residents actually vote for Democrats? Surprisingly, although traditional here, you know, we are a bit conservative, but, you know, we have actually residents who come who vote for Democrats in certain counties here in this area, okay? So that's something we can talk about in the future. And also imagine, so here's web scrapping. I also allows you to do web scrapping. Let's say you go to twitter.com and you want to get 1,000 tweets or posts. What's the best way? You probably think about buying, you know, uh, spending some money on third-party websites so they can scrap those 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 tweets per you. But now, if you learn R, you can actually do it on your own for free. For 5,000 tweets, how much does it cost? Zero. How much time? A few minutes, okay? A few minutes. But it does involve some learning, okay? Nothing comes for free. Otherwise, those third-party companies wouldn't exist. Right? So you do need to understand what's going on, which keyword I need to use, and what does this line syntax really mean? So, you, I, you know, little by little, you'll be there, okay? So let's get started. Again, you know, first you go to, you see our studio cloud, right? Our studio, our studio cloud, right? And you know, let's say, you usually the first result, right? Login. I already say my credentials, right? And you see, you know, let's say a student also asked me, let's say, uh, what's the difference between R and Python, right? And uh, you already can actually, you know, let's say you can use this R student platform to do both R and Python program, okay? And you see here, you know, we're gonna select our new, uh, new R student project, okay? And uh, it may take a few minutes, uh, a few more seconds, depending on internet speed. And, you know, next one. Uh, we want to double check where our data set is, right? So you see here, you know, we want to, I really want to highlight this line. The reason is that, you know, you see here, we can really read our data set in different ways. So this is really the, you know, the, 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 the interesting thing of doing the big program because it simplifies your workflow. And also it helps you, you know, uh, it helps you keep, keep your workflow and your data set and reports in one single place, okay? In one single place. I mean, uh, now you see, we are going to read this data set from that website, which website? My GitHub website, right? You see, this is my username, my GitHub website, username. So let's get started, okay? Again, five. Right, the left side, five new five. This is also called IDE, okay? IDE or console, okay? Five new five, right? And later on, we may ask for also try portal, which is a different, uh, which is a different publication platform, and you know it, it also does similar things but a little bit better, okay? Let's use our markdown, okay? And uh, number five, okay, fifth option. Allows you to create HTML web page. Okay, so uh, 
So see, today we are not going to upload any data set, okay? Because my data set is there. So do you want to install these packages now? Definitely click yes, okay? If you want me to slow down, please let me know. Otherwise, you should be able to watch this again. And also you can always raise your hand after my tutorial, okay? I'll be going to your seat and uh, help you, you know, for your question you have. And, uh, and you know, let's see. So now, you know, let's say, uh, I think, you know, this is the default option, right? You click OK. And then, you know, you are going to uh, copy and paste my syntax paste is there, right? Let's click OK. As you click OK, you see here, you know, you, you, can, you can use Control-A, the hot key, or maybe just highlight, you know, the whole section, right? As you highlight, you click, you know, backspace or delete, OK, backspace. Now you see it's, uh, you know, it's a, you know, it's a, like a, a platform that allows you to type line by line. Let's say we can definitely type line by line. It takes so much time, right? Uh, especially as a beginner, you know, maybe you can do one plus one equals two, two, right? Easily. But, you know, when it comes to more complex things, let's just try to copy my thing. And uh, we, we can try to understand some parts of this uh, syntax, okay? Little by little, okay? So copy my syntax, where's my syntax in discussion two? The second paragraph of discussion two, where's discussion two? You click modules, the second week, okay? You find discussion two. You click modules, go to a second week, you find discussion two. And then the syntax is github.com slash forward slash whatever, right? And then make a copy, okay? Make a copy. Do not copy the whole page, just the syntax section, okay? Line one to line 66, and then paste it here. Right click, okay? And then paste, okay? When you paste here, you'll see, you know, let's say, uh, we should be ready to create a document and no rush, okay? We have enough time, no rush. So now, you know, I think I want you to do some minor changes, okay? Because this is your class, you do have some ownership. This is also a software that, you know, that is, you know, that is user-friendly, right? That's why, you know, you can take some partial ownership, even if this tutorial is written by your instructor, okay? Let me show you how you can take some partial ownership, okay? As a beginner, okay? So now you put your name, uh, your name, and then MKTG, 4,000, okay? And then hot by, okay? And make sure you still use a quotation mark because that quotation mark is a part of the CSS title, okay? Do not delete anything at this stage, okay? The, the quotation mark should be there, okay? So that being said, you know, now once you put your name, replace your name with your first name and last name, maybe just your first name, okay? Up to you. So you see, but by doing this, you actually you know keep a record of workbook, and then when it goes for when it comes to job interview, employers know that you, know, you learn this by taking this class, right? Okay. And uh, as you know, let's say now you know you probably want to change the date, right? Make sure it keeps the original format. So that being said, if the month starts with four, two digits, you want to have two digits, okay? Do not break the rules, right? Unless you write a software, you can, you know, dictate any rules, right? Otherwise, make sure you follow the rules. It's very boring sometimes, right? But when you have the final output, it's not boring, right? So, uh, as you know, I think when I talk, you know, sometimes I try to show some something that makes you get excited, uh, So that being said, I want to show you just one more example, okay? So to be honest, all of nearly all of the pictures you read, all of the tables you read from New York Times, I'm talking about one well, of the best, not necessarily best, but because some people may not agree, right? If you are Republican, you probably don't agree, right? So this is one of the most popular newspapers in the world. So nearly all of the, the graphs and tables which you read from this newspaper, are created using R, okay? Nearly all of them. 
Okay. So, and so that being said, again, so I think I can probably show you some details next time. And, you know, at New York Times, all of the graphs and figures on New York Times are credited using R. Okay. That's just a story you want to know. And then, you know, let's say, don't, uh, do not go too far. So let's say, you know, this is January, two digits, right? Zero, one. And then two digits here. I mean, 30 or 31 really doesn't matter. I think it's 30, right? 31. Oh, time flies. Let's put 31. So, so 31. Make sure you put forward slash. If the original one forward slash, okay? Do not use, you know, uh, dot or like uh, underscore, okay? So that being said, you see, we are going to create an HTML document, okay? And uh, do not, you know, delete anything, okay? After this line, I think you don't need to change anything. Also, the fancy thing doing this today is that, you know, you don't need to upload data set. Where is the data set? This was a question sometimes students would ask. You see, you are going to read that CSV file from my website, okay? From my website. So, and then you are going to generate a plot. This plot will show you the relationship between TV and sales. TV means TV advertising. And then data equals to advertising underscore sales. That being said, you know, we read the data set. And then this data set is not named ad underscore sales, right? That's the first section. Oh, that's the second section. First section, you see we are using data set from R, okay? And we want to analyze relation between Y and X, okay? Y and X as we draw A, B line, okay? A, B line. So I think uh, that's it. You see, you save it, you number one, because this number, be, this name will not be published. It's just a file name, okay? Number one. And then you see here, you know, uh, close to the top, it's asking, you know, if you want to install these packages, always click yes, because without installing these packages, there are nowhere for it to move forward, okay? The reason that this language is so user-friendly is that, you know, many times, we use these packages to make our life easier, okay? Install, click install. Don't click, don't, don't bother me, okay? So these are not advertising campaigns, okay? Everything you click here, you know, may help you get your work done, okay? There's no advertising campaign. So now click the need button again. So you can click HT, you can create HTML document, So congratulations, you see here, you know, let's say your second workbook is ready, right? Your second workbook is ready. So now let me tell you, you know, uh, the other side of the coin. Many times students come to a marketing class, they assume, you know, it's a statistics class. Now let me tell you why your domain expertise matters. Many times, even for Google, even for scientists and data engineers and maybe marketing analysts who work for Google, 80% time they're working with data, okay? Data is actually the most important asset. So that being said, you see running the analysis only takes you less than one minute, right? Because you know, all of these algorithms are already being developed, right? You don't need to rewrite this algorithm. Let's say in you know, a function here shows you, you need to use a B line. You don't want to use a B underscore line, right? So all of these algorithms are already being developed, right? And you really just need to make sure your data makes sense. Your verbals, your features, garbage in, garbage out. That's the best explanation why domain expertise matters. Garbage in, garbage out. So that being said, you know, if you create garbage data, if you use garbage data, there's no way for it to create something useful, okay? So that being said, the best algorithm will not even help you if your data doesn't work if your data is useless, okay? Now that being said, you know, that's why I think many times we will spend more time on data cleaning, data pre-processing, okay? So let's publish, okay, let's publish. And later on, I think you can also try to have your Twitter link, okay, if you want to. Let's publish the link. You see it's asking me to uh, install this package, other packages, okay? I always click yes. And then, you know, should allow me to wait for a few more seconds. I click our, our pops. The first option, 
because it's free. Okay. Second one, we want to you know, share application plots or something with our team, then you use the second option. Usually it's not for free, okay? So, so now you see here, no, I saved my credentials, okay? This is usually the most time consuming part. Sometimes I forget my password, okay? And I click sign in. And then you see here, I'm ready. And I'm lazy, I'm just gonna copy this title, okay? For some reason, you still need to type something. You see probably also the second part. It's, you know, you need to put this title here. I was expecting, maybe they could just generate this title automatically, save my time, right? Because, uh, okay, let's, uh, Let's use a, you know, let's type the last part of the HTML address, okay? You can use something short, it really doesn't matter, okay? So maybe you can use something like bivariate, which means we are doing a bivariate analysis, right? Relationship between two different variables, okay? And uh, maybe I have already used these keywords. I use probably bivariate analysis underscore, okay? Okay, you probably use this word first time. Publish, okay? Congratulations, finished. Yeah, you see a whole process takes you maybe less than five minutes, okay? User-friendly and also, you know, it, it gives you a sense of belonging, right? I, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the syntax I have here because otherwise, you know, let's say, you know, Zoom, you are doing a little bit of programming, you probably don't know the, the syntax you included here, right? Let me give you a brief overview. Let's say plot, as in y3, as in tilde, x2. So here, we want to plot the relationship between x2, which is a predictor, and a dependent variable, which is y3, as in comma, as in data equals two, this weird name, okay? As that being said, this data set is named, you know, uh, this way, okay? okay? Yeah, this data set is available from R, okay? I don't, I don't own this data set, okay? I'm gonna show you a, a way of the following example that you know I do have ownership of that data set. You will see how I read that data set, okay? And then you know, we, we are gonna draw a AB line, okay? AB line means, you know, let's say we have a scatter plot and then we just want to draw a line which explains the trend of these scatter plots, right? I think LM means linear model. That's it. It's like a linear regression, right? And uh, this AB line gives a approximation of the relationship between X and Y. So it seems that you know that's a linear relationship, right? As then name the data set, right? As in color, okay. So now the next one. Now, the next one is already the big thing. And I think I remember some of you asking, you know, how many packages do we have to support user R? The answer is more than 10,000, more than 10,000. So that's why, you know, this language is so easy to use because, you know, otherwise, if you read C or C Sharp, which is the original computer language they use to develop this software language, you know, it's uh, it's only readable by computer engineers, okay? But this language is written for all human beings. So that being said, you see, library read R. We want to use this library, and this library is designed for us to, you know, read the online data set. Now, also the worst scenario, the worst scenario. Let's say, you know, you really don't know what this library means, okay? Google search. Google search. Okay, let's say in the second solution, you really want to know what this library means, okay? You see, you go to, let me show a different solution, okay? Maybe chat GPT as well. So R, new file, R script, question mark, and then copy and paste it here, and then highlight, and then click run. So description, explanations here. Okay, so that's how you get explanation of some functions which you don't understand. Let's say you know, now, you know, let's say we used, let's say, uh, AB line, oops, uh, undo. Okay, I just uh, type here, 
we use a b line here I, I really want to understand what a b line means okay i i want to see what this a b line means okay put a question mark uh, a b line okay hi as in you see okay so so that being said you know you really don't need to memorize anything okay this is the best thing learning these softwares because uh, everything is open source everything for free okay so unless you become professional user and uh, then you are going to earn seven figure salary maybe eight figure salaries as then you will pay okay but as a beginner everything's for free so because they don't want to intimidate you they want you to become a seven figure salary employee okay and uh, next one so you see here you know my data set right and uh, you know let's see uh this is my the data set I posted here, right? I mentioned, you know, I don't have ownership of this data set. You see, this is my GitHub username, right? And this is my original GitHub website, right? And, uh, you know, but you can actually create your own GitHub website as well. And uh, so, what else? As you know, let's say we actually read our data set. And when we read our data set, we use read underscore CSV. It means, you know, we want to read that. Uh, csv file from that website okay from that website and then here's some package information can pretty much ignore you can ignore this section okay package information it shows you how this package is you know actually uh is actually you know used uh, for supporting our analysis right uh, you just need to make sure you know how to run the syntax uh, how to get a graph okay so next one we want to get a plot Okay, we can also build a plot and then, and then use different colors. But uh, here we just use, you know, probably black and white. So you see the relationship between TV and sales. You can also add a title and make do it automatically. Okay, and then data equals to advertising underscore sales. Advertising underscore sales. This is a data set. Data equals two. Okay. Done. We finished. And then the remaining part, I'm asking you some questions, okay? Remember in my discussion, I also have some additional questions here, okay? Might be a little bit confused, huh? you know, if that when you, when you ask, can yeah. you plot the relationship between radio Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sales, is that, yeah. the answer is yes, but you would just have to change that yeah. to- Exactly. So I want to give you guys some time for you to practice. Um, because I don't know, as you guys starting, you know, doing exercise on your own and stop recording. So you see, I have the last column, which is sales, right? I'm asking you, can you plot the relation between radio advertising and sales, right? Radio advertising and sales. You see, I do have one column, which is radio, right? So maybe you can copy, right, the verbal name. And then what do you do? I'm going to explain, it, and hopefully you will see how it works, right? So you are going to replace something in this function. This is a function, right? A function helps you draw a graph. A function helps you do some calculations, right? Function can help you know, make you know application or do something else. Okay. So you are going to replace something in this function. Remember, this function is used to explain the relationship between TV advertising and sales. TV is a predictor here, and sales is a dependent variable. This is something you learned from BUS 10 And now I want you to draw the relation between radio advertising and sales, right? See if you could do it. See if you could do it. The only thing you need to change is to go back here, right? And change this line, 47, right? Or maybe a better way, a better way is to copy 47 because you still want to keep that graph, right? You still want to keep the original graph and then maybe, you know, just keep line 47, make a copy so you can generate a different graph. This different graph will show you what? The relationship between radio advertising and sales, right? So you can generate two different graphs, right? So can I do it? So make a copy, but you have to change something 
in line 48, right? Otherwise, it shows the same graph twice, right? Can you go back to the to the actual name of it? Is actual it, name? Yeah. Like for the radio? Yeah, actual name is here. Exactly. That's a good idea. It's always important to go back to the actual names, right? There's also a different way. I think, uh, you know, yeah, you asked an excellent question. Yeah, thank you, Esmeralda. So I think I have a different way to show you these names, okay? So I'm going to do some minor changes. For those of you who want to probably follow me, you can do similar things. Okay, so let me show you and see if it works, okay? You see, I added one line, STR. And some of you probably know STR means, right? What STR means? STR means string, right? So name the variables. Click the need file. So Esmeralda actually asked excellent question. And uh, you see here, if you want to know the name of the variables, there is an easy way. You use one line syntax, which is a string, str, parentheses, add, underscore, sales. And then you get all of the variable names. Radio is here, right? Radio has 200 observations. It shows you know, maybe the first observation uh, to maybe number six and number seven, right? And now you know that variable name here, you don't need to go back to my data set, right? Yeah. So you see here, you know, if I have this syntax twice, unfortunately it just generates this graph once. You know why? Wait, you said what? I, I have this line twice, but it generates this graph once. Anybody knows why? Because it's the same. Because the same and the, uh, R, you know, only runs the last one if they are the same. It generates, you know, because your functions are same. But now imagine if I want to generate two, two plots, I can do something a little bit different. I mean, for some of you who want to just follow me, I mean, this is just a different idea. I can use plot one, right? And then I can use like plot two, right? So, you know, I can differentiate plot one and plot two. Plot one, and then, you know, I think here I want to type plot one, right? And then plot one will be generated below. And then I can file, have plot two, right? And then plot two will be generated below. And then I'm going to save it. But this one, I will show you two different, two same graphs, okay? And you. Oh. I probably times type something wrong, but uh, I think I should be able to correct it. Let's see. PLT1. Sales TV. Yeah. Looks the same. Yeah, they look the same. But let me let me use a different variable and see how it works. Let me use uh, newspaper. Use newspaper and uh, we'll see, you know, if you can generate these two different plots. Okay. Yeah. It still says no, but uh, I think here is this. So, first one's TV, and second one is actually newspaper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That has no to. Huh? That other one has no to no plot. Yeah. Yeah, plot two. Yeah, but anyway, we've got two. Different plots, right? We got two different plots. Yeah. And uh, it does show us, you know, let's say the relation between TV and sales. And then the second one, the relationship between newspaper and sales. I don't know why we have this no, you know, with two hashtags. That's so weird. Okay. So now again, the question I'm asking you is to create, you know, a plot which shows TV advertising. No, 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 radio advertising and sales, okay? So, any question? Um, yeah. Okay, so I went ahead and created my plot. Um, between the radio advertising and sales. 
after that, do we, how do we show that we finished that? Okay. Yeah, assuming, uh, let me, okay. So uh, again, we have the title chunk, and then we have, you know, next round here, we have the text chunk, unshaded area, unshaded area. For the text chunk, you can type any words, plain English language. Text chunk means like plain English language. Now we have the code chunk from line 35 to line 38, okay? Here, they use these forward ticks, three forward ticks, and then, you know, R, okay? And then here, you know, let's say whenever you want to change anything, let's say color, whichever, you know, understand, you will understand, you know, let's say this is a part of programming language, you have to follow the rules, not your rules, okay? The rules. So, as then here, question one. Now the beautiful thing of doing this, that, you know, you can document everything, all of the details. So now I'm asking, you know, is there a relationship between X and Y? So now, you know, imagine your report is here, right? So let's say, I mean, I, you know, now you can type it here. I mean, now you probably assume you know, we are making things more complicated, but you know, it's just a part of the learning process. You see, now we have a graph here, right? Um, if I'm asking you to answer a question, you see answer, your answer here, you can retype here. If you type your answers in the discussion form, that's okay, but we can type it here. The, there, you can say like uh, there seems to be a uh, linear, Linear. L I. Yeah, L I. And E A R, right? Okay, yeah, but I use uh, Microsoft, they always give me a reminder when I do something wrong. Linear relation between X and Y, right? Okay, so I see. Uh, now, you know, imagine if I save it again and need the document, you see, my report will include my answers to the first question, okay? Or you can just, you can make sure you, you, you can also put the title here, right? Answer or response, okay? And, uh, and then you, know, you can do the same thing for other sections. You answer here, you answer here, you answer here, okay? So similar things, okay? But I want you to read this readings a little bit, okay? Because, you know, I want to make sure you spend just a reasonable amount of time probably not 20 hours or 10 hours, reasonable amount of time means at least one or two hours, okay? What does that mean? I want you to spend, a, you know, maybe just reasonable amount of time to read, you know, research design for business, right? This part, okay? This part, maybe if you have more time, you know, read, you know, the, 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 the articles I included here, right? What is a bioreality analysis, right? We have been talking about this all day long. What is bioreality analysis, right? And uh, what does that mean? You see here, you know, let's say, these, these are the best explanations or descriptions. You want to follow the best example. You see here, you know, let's say, under the graph, they have explanation, right? What does this mean? You want to make sure, you know, anybody who come to this page, we understand what you did, right? And these are the best examples, again, guys, okay? Uh, otherwise, again, so I'm uh, not expecting us to read for 20 hours per week for my course, okay? Not possible. You know, if you could just read this part as that require reading, it should be good, okay? This require reading and uh, the reference, okay? The reference. So uh, that's the next part, okay? Now I'm sure you guys may have more questions, okay? So I remember one of the questions you guys asked the first discussion is, you know, let's say, in addition to R markdown, what errors can I do with R, okay? Now I'm gonna show this is even more important when we move forward, because you'll be using this part of the platform as well. Sometimes you see R, new file, R script. So now you can copy the syntax part. You see syntax here, line 44 to line 40, 51, copy, and paste it here. See what happens, okay? And then you see some, somebody asked me, you know, why do I click uh, the need button instead of run? Now I'm gonna let you run because close to the end of the class, right? You are ready to run. 
So now let's click around and see what happens. Okay. But you don't want to you don't want to copy and paste those plain English words. Okay. Make sure you just copy and paste in uh, the, 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 the syntax. You see now the graph is pretty here. Right? Now let's say, you know, let's say you just want this line. Yeah, I think I do it. You see the on the following section, right? So our syntax, this window allows you to test your syntax line by line, line by line. You see if I click plot two, uh, I think here I probably did something wrong. For some reason, you know, plot two, we, we just couldn't name these plots for some reason. I probably need to double check. It, yeah. It's giving you plot two. Enough. Yeah, it's giving me plot two to, if I, if I, maybe, maybe I could do this. Maybe now it should be. Yeah, but if I type plot two again here, it gives the, you know, nothing. But anyways, the plot two is already generated. You see if I, you know, if I type here, it's already generating on the left side, on the right side, newspaper, right? Yeah. Okay, anyway, so I think, uh, I mean, I'll see if you guys have any question, okay? Otherwise, I think, you know, I probably, when I was responding to you guys, uh, I think, you know, I mentioned like an interesting book. Uh, this is probably something you want to use, okay? As a reference during the semester as well. And, uh, you know, if you have spare time, just come to this website. Uh, it really shows you, you know, how to learn the very basics, okay? Prerequisite and the uh, lobsters data set, right? And, you know, fish.csv data set, welcome language. And then maybe, you know, a little bit errors, you know, let's see, uh, you're welcome here. And uh, you see the introduction, but this introduction that, you know, just general introduction, it shows you the step-by-step -step working R markdown, right? What is the mark markdown R code you see here? Uh, you know, you can just come the, to this page and try to copy this and that. If they ask you to produce a table, and then you can try to produce a table. Summary cards, cards the data set available in R. You can, you know, run summary cards and then get to get the summary of these cards, right? It's a data set, right? Let's say, you know, you can use the same, same, you know, let's say, you can use the same syntax. We just use string cards. It shows you all of the variable the names, right? Speed and distance, right? Speed and distance, right? And, uh, Maybe, you know, now since you know the, you know, A, B, E, and then you can do C, you see, make a copy. Somebody who can tell me, how can we actually generate this plot between speed and distance? You would have to change the data. Yeah. So now we change this to speed, right? And we change this one to distance, right? D-I-S-T. Make sure name of the consistent. Uh, data equals two. Data set to the name R. Right, a general plot. You didn't add an S. Oh, of oh, course, yes, 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 yes. Uh, you have to be detail oriented. Thank you, Esmeralda. So now the plot is here, right? So now I guarantee you know today you should have learned at least some useful functions, how to generate a plot for any data set. And then what is our syntax? What is our code? And then what is our markdown? And then, and then, you know, uh, how to use R Markdown, how to use R code, uh, R syntax interface, okay? So that being said, you know, you can always test these uh, functions little by little, line by line, and see what magic things will happen, like, like plot pressure, right? And then copy my functions, like uh, str means strings, right? And pressure, right? Pressure is the name of the data set, right? And then you see temperature and pressure. This one shows you the, the relationship between, between pressure and temperature, right? You, which one do you want to use a predictor? Which one? Predictor would be temperature. Yeah, predictor will be temperature, right? Because you care, you know, what temperature, what pressure you will have when you drive, right? Not the other way around, because you can't change the temperature, right? But you can change your air pressure, right? Your tire pressure. So, so data equals two. 
P R E S S U R E pressure. So now let's okay. generate plot. How did it give you a plot already? No, it's not. Yeah, it's here. Oh yeah, there's a different way. You can you can do plot. It generates the same plot. Yeah, exactly. This is just a original, you know, original function. But since this is a data set well being R, that means says they help you simplify your learning process. It gives you the pre the data set already or the graph already. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So now hopefully you understand, you know, it's just step by pro step process, you know. Sometimes it's boring, but most time I'm sure you know you will enjoy because uh, this will help you get unlimited job opportunities. Okay. Hopefully your aim is to get a seven-figure salary. If that's a goal, I think uh, learning are really